13 years ago, I remember being in the Euro dollar futures pit when you were asking uh, Mr. Greenspan questions and they were giving you a standing ovation. You have been a <laughs> deficit hawk going way back. And my question to you is simple. We're spending $52,000 a second, the federal government, okay? Where have we gone off the rail on deficits and is it a tax issue? Was tax reform the culprit? Obviously not. The taxes are too high. The taxes should be lower. The tax on the economy is all the regulations and all the philosophy of government that we have to run a welfare warfare state. So it, it, it is the spending problem, and it's a very, very weak Congress that, uh, you know, capitulates to all the demands. Anytime you have a strong lobbying group, uh, no matter what the category is, you know, they capitulate and they keep spending because that's how you stay in office. You spend a lot of money. And also, Rick, it's a reflection of a philosophy taught in our schools for so long on Keynesianism that deficits don't matter. It isn't that it's astounding that they don't listen to us. They're taught this. They think we don't know what we're talking about. And you know, in the short run, you can borrow a lot of money. Money. A country can do it longer than an individual. And a country that passes out the reserve currency can do it for a long time. But all that does is make the bubble bigger. But it's a addiction. You know, let me it's interrupt you a minute, Dr. Ron. Let me interrupt you a minute. You hit on something. We just had another Texan on, Jeb Hesserling, and he was saying that the president has too much power. I think many presidents lately have had too much power. But what he said next really made me scratch my head. He goes, you know, it, Congress needs more of a say-so. Who's stopping Congress from having more of a say-so, <laughs> sir? Only Congress. I mean, it's not rhetorical. The, yeah. yeah. It's as crazy. So. But, but they reflect the people, too. So the people have responsibility, the Congress has a responsibility, and everybody just goes along to, to get along. They could change it tomorrow if they wanted to. And all they'd have to do is be able to read about third grade reading and read the Constitution. It's very clear what the Congress should be doing. All right, now let's go back to the issue. You know, also about 10 years ago when you were getting that standing ovation, I was on this floor blowing a blood vessel, screaming at the top of my legs, lungs, stop spending, stop spending, stop spending. I really think spending's the issue. Everything from subsidies, whether it's on uh, renewable energy, ag, we just did a $12 billion bill on agriculture to help them out, just writing checks. We don't really fix anything. Your thoughts on how we could get more religion in the form of less spending and get the people, the citizens, to understand a good economy will generate more money and you can spend it on social programs at will. So, uh, you know, that diminishes the power of the Fed and is not very popular. So your argument and mine haven't gone very far. But when does it end? It ends, I'm afraid, in a catastrophe. Because when debt gets this big and the malinvestment is so distorted that to tinker with it and move back and gradually move back, it never happens. And that's what is said. You should always work for it. You should figure out a program. And that's what I tried to do in the presidential campaign is, yes, cut here and there. And I always thought foreign expenditures were a good place uh, you know, to start. And you don't have to start with child health care. But that isn't going to happen. That is my conclusion from having been in Washington. The lobbies are so big. The structure is so strong. Congress is so weak. And the Fed is so powerful because nobody wants to do that because if they'd have cut like you might have had, it might have you know, put dampers on the stock market, and uh, that wouldn't have been good. So the stocks are watched very carefully by the Fed, and you know, the plunge protection team is alive and well, and all they do, and from my estimation, is they make the bubble teams, bigger and bigger. They're not only alive and well, the Bank of Japan's proud of being their country's plunge protection team. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.